Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh? So come get some. Cromcon! Cromcon! Hey, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. If you are a fan of comic books, if you're a fan of comic book conventions, and if you like meeting comic book creators and getting comics and comic related stuff, then you need to make your plans to attend Daytona Beach Comic Con. This year's show is September 7th and 8th. Silverline will be there, so you should make your plans to be there too. We'll see you there. If you like comics and find yourself in the Orlando, Florida area, I mean, doesn't everyone come to Orlando at some point in time to see the House of Mouse? But when you're here, you need to make it a point to visit Coliseum of Comics, especially the one on East Colonial Drive. They carry Silverline Comics, even a limited edition Coliseum of Comics version of our comics. So, when you go, be sure to ask for Silverline Comics and tell them we sent you. OCD stands for Orlando Collector Deviants. OCD, Stephen Trish. They're a family of geeks who promote geek things, particularly those around the Orlando, Florida area. They're big supporters of Silverline, and we think you should be supporters of theirs, too. Go give them some love. If you are an independent comic book maker, and you need to get your independent comics made, you need to look no further than Kablam! Kablam Digital Printing. They print our books, and they do a bang-up job. They're not only trusted by Silverline, but many, many independent comic book makers. Head on over to Kablam.com and see for yourself just how easy it is to have your comic printed by them and tell them Silverline sent you. Hi, this is Tim TK, host of That Silverline Show on Tuesday. Join us at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific every Tuesday night as we discuss pop culture and the joys of making comics. Hi, I'm Barb Gilbert, co-host of Silverline's Wednesday Wham. Join us each Wednesday night as we discuss comics, literature, movies, and anything else that may catch our attention. I'm Roland Mann, and I host Silverline's Silver Sunday. Join me every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we make mine Silverline. Night, Mike means open mic. Uh, welcome to he's, he's right over there. <laughs> welcome to Silver Lines Silver Sunday on this <laughs> March the 10th, 2024. Uh, what's Renee bringing you, Tommy? We heard you ask for it. <laughs> hey, <is> that <laughs> your peppermint patty? <laughs> so, so I'm your host. I'm Roland Man. We're gonna have a fun night tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. With me as hey, 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 I can do that too, Tommy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> with me as always is the son of origins, Mr. Tom Mason. Say hello, Tom. Hi, everyone. Also joining us is that man in the mask guy who's going to be uh, leading us a little bit tonight, Mr. Mike W. Belcher. Howdy, howdy. And, of course, uh, Miss Cat and Mouse Colors herself, Miss Roberta Conroy. Hello. <laughs> and, of course, the all-around con artist, Mr. Thomas Flormonti Jr., who did howdy, not bring dude. enough to share with everyone. No, he didn't, and I think we should just kick his ass out. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me hand it to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <Grab> <laughs> hey, Roland, can I give you a drink here? Let me hand it to yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. There you go. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Before we get too far along, I want to remind everyone that you need to go to your local comic shop and tell them to order Kalis number two. There it is right there. March 241927. Uh, Kalis number two shipping in. Shop, shipping two shops May 15th, 2024. Um, this is, of course, from the um, previews catalog. Uh, this is the online version. So if you get the print version, it's still going to be in there. So get that order. Tell your comic shop to order it. 
uh, tell them to order lots of copies that uh, you want one for yourself and you want one to give away um, because that's what good comic book should, readers do. You should order three. One to keep pristine, one to get signed, and then one to give to your buddy. Even better. Yeah. Even who, better. Who is the artist on Chaos? Uh, the artist is uh, Louis Chernowski. He's uh, a writer, too. Uh, it's written by Brent T. Larson, who is sometimes on uh, Wednesday nights. And uh, Louis Chernowski is the artist and is colored by, although they don't list the colorist or the letterer here, uh, it is, uh, and, and before you guys get upset, I submitted that information. There's only so much right. I can do, right? So, uh, so the uh, it's colored by uh, Leandro Huergo, and it is lettered by that man in the mask guy himself, Mr. Michael W. Belcher. So, uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of a whole slew of signatures that you can get. So and maybe uh, you need five copies. Oh, you need a bunch of copies. There. I, I, the more the better. The more the better. Uh, let me get over the comments. I see some. Uh, I, I'm not there, so. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Pops. Pops says, hey, yo. Then he says, if you like what we do and want to contribute content to or become a sponsor of the Madness Network, uh, contact us at uh, thepopsvanzant at gmail or donate at that address there. Uh, help us make it happen. Uh, then he says, covered a lot of Malibu today on the show offs. Very cool. Oh, there uh, we go. I don't know what YPP means. I know uh, YOLO, but that's not YOLO. I don't. <laughs> I don't know why PP. Uh, you're gonna well, have I, to interpret I, that one. I could guess, but it would get us kicked off the air. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get Barb to, uh, to tell you about the time she got the. Uh, uh, she got us kicked off. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, true, true story. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, it was. So tonight we are talking about why did we want to make comics. And, uh, of course, there's a, there's a gaggle of us here, so I'm sure we've got lots of reasons. But uh, this is – the next couple of weeks is going to be a series of, of comic stuff. And it's something that, uh, you know, if you recall in the past, we have done things that, hey, Tommy says or Roberta says. And, and you know, this is basically – we talk about whatever they want to talk about. This is something that Mike said, hey, i kind of like to talk about this. So, Mike, I'm going to kind of just let you direct us. We're not going to leave you out to hang. You know, we can talk. <laughs> but uh, uh, why, don't you, why, yeah. why don't you get us kicked off, Mike? Hour. We'll sit back and watch. <laughs> well, you, you know, the, the idea that I had, you know, when, when you when you spend like five minutes on social media and you see all these people talking about their comics and, and you, you, you see them sniping at each other, mm. you tend to forget the one thing that kind of binds us all together is that for some reason we like making these things. Yeah. And, and and that's the only thing that that, uh, that kind of kind of binds us together to, uh, across you know politics and genres is that we kind of pick to do these things these 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 four color wonders and spend so much time on them and, and love yeah and I, I, again I love hearing origin stories I, yeah. I, I love I want to know what got you into comics what did Tom get into comics which Sounds to me like last week's ominous comment. I, I, I don't know if I want to hear it. <laughs> right. I never, I'll, I'll repeat it for the new viewers. Is that I, I, I said flatly that I never had a desire to get into comics or to make comics. And then I spent a large portion of my adult life actually doing that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll hear, Mike, my, my, you've probably heard me say, I know Tommy has, uh, you know, because there is a lot of drama in, in, uh, in the comic community. And I don't like seeing it personally. No. Um, uh, but one of one of the things I, I was really tempted at one point in time to go with the silver line tagline is that we make comics, not drama or or our drama is in the comics. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So I smell a T-shirt. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So I, like but that. I do like that because uh, like you said, I, I see a lot of that uh, on, on social media and I'm just like, would you guys shut up and just make comics? Exactly. Not, but, you know, but don't you think, don't you think that the, uh, the drama of comics isn't in the work itself? It's always in the behind the scenes weirdness. It's always, it always feels like, you know, it's like high correct. school or college yes. or in a bar or whatever. It never, yes. it never is about the work like, the drama like, is never necessarily i mean maybe 10 percent of it is about the work but no uh, most of the drama is never actually about the product i agree an example would be tommy's a sucky inker because he's got a hat on 
<laughs> what? Right? I mean, that's just stupid, right? Right. Or he's and got the wrong what, hat on. <laughs> that's that's what I think a lot of time when I see some of that. I'm like, you're just you're upset that you don't like uh, the state that that person lives in. You don't like the color shirt that they're wearing, and so you're talking crap. You're 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 creating drama, and it's not about the work that they've created. It's about the person. Right. So and yeah, I, 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 agree. I generally don't care about the person I, I, if I no. like the work a lot. I make yeah. I make a lot of because they because the more yeah. I, I well as I've gotten older and sorry Mike I seem to have taken your topic away from you but as I as I've gotten older many of the people who are movie stars that I love in in movies that I absolutely cannot stop watching turned out to be jackasses yeah and so but I still love the movie and so I it's it's I can't really separate. I can't really say, okay, well, you know, John Wayne is a person who had some bad beliefs. Therefore I can't watch any more John Wayne movies. Right. I can't be that guy. Right. And yeah. so that's, there's, there's a, there's a line for me between creator and, and work. Yeah. yeah when Roland and I've had this conversation a ton of times. It's like, I don't want to know what's going on with the actor. I just get up there. <laughs> Monkey, dance for me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, and, Tommy. You know, <laughs> dance for me, Monkey. What you had for breakfast? I don't want to know who you yeah. voted for. I don't want to know who what you who you married. I don't care. I just want to enjoy. Let me give you money. Quit yes. making it hard for me to give you money. You, you do a thing that I really enjoy. Yeah. I want you to do that thing. Keep doing that. And, Shut up know, with the I, other I stuff. That you need to uh, to 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 not be public about yourself but you know just uh be public amongst your crew yeah. of folks or whatever you ain't you don't have to get out on the national news and show your business to everybody i don't care about that <laughs> that's wanna, right yeah i want to give you money you're making it so i can't give you any money but you get so, on my nerve so it would be it would be would it be a safe bet to say that none of us started comics because we had uh an axe to grind or uh, 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 drama to to personal drama to create. None of us started that, right? I did. Well, I, I'm I'm the outlier, so I have to wait my turn. <laughs> no, I I sure did. I I knew some people that were doing it, and I'm like, oh, I can do it too. Yeah, yeah. Think, well, so, think, so 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 what well, you guys don't know? Tom, yeah, Tommy Tommy's local. Tommy and I were local, right? Uh, and, and and he and I were friends to begin with before we started making comics. And, I, and what happened, and, and I, I, I've told Tommy this What are you before, telling my story? He, he saw me that's doing it. <laughs> He's like, story. if Roland can make comics, I oh, can make I'm comics. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that but a lot of a lot of great art also comes from anger. And a lot of great art also comes from agenda. And so you've got, you know, because a lot of the alternative really comics and a lot of the underground comics and a lot of the, uh, a lot of that stuff does make great work from anger. So I think some people can be driven to produce that stuff. But most of the people that we know yeah, are not necessarily angry people no. who, who are like, oh, this, this issue annoys me. I'm making my comic book. It's like, well, yeah. we don't, I don't know those people. Yeah, I, I don't either. So, made a so comic my, just so you could get your point across. Is that what you meant? Kind of a thing? Yeah. To yeah. make a, a, a statement. I'm going to start making comics so I can do something for the world. That can. So, no. Mike, we'll start with you then. Yeah. Why did you Why did you want to make comics? You know, if, if, you know, people ask me what was the first comic you read, and I can't tell them because I've always had comics in my life. I mean, it, it's always been right there in front of me. And when I got into my teen years, and and you start seeing names, and you really start putting some value into those names that those guys who created comics, you think I could do this. I, you yeah. know, I, you know you. You're told all your life you got to think about your career. You got to think about this or that. And I fell in love with the visual medium so fast. And it, like I said it was just so part of it that when I got, like I said, when I got to the point where I realized, well, I could pick a vocation. I mean, I thought about comics, and it, it was just such a, like I said, a, a, a integral part of what was becoming my personality. And I pretty much formed, you know, art classes in high school and. You know, when I got into college, I took journalism classes to, you know, be able to write better. And and because, you know, I, I couldn't afford the Kubert School, so I had to kind of make do with what I could because, you know, even 1990, the Kubert School was not cheap. Right. Um, so, you know, 
it was just that that medium of a, a mixture of writing and art. You know, it's the K walls. It's it's conveying a story. It's a love. I just like I said, it just overtook me, and it still is. I mean, even you know, well, you know so I just what, like, you know, let me you obviously you, never me met my high school guidance counselor. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask your question then in, in a slightly different way, Mike. Then so so if you can't remember the first comic you read. What it what and this I've been thinking about this a lot to, because when people ask me, I kind of have the same thing. I'm like, you know, I know I read comics before. What's the first comic that was memorable to you? What's the first comic that made you go, hey, this this one's got something special? Okay, I've read these other comics, but this one means something to me. Do you, can you can oh. you remember the first comic that was memorable to you? Wow, that, that again, that was so many. I think it was probably the um, uh, Secret Wars, you know. Really? You know, because uh, in '84, here was all the characters right in front of you, and you know, here you had Shooter writing it and Mike Zett drawing it, and and you just, it was just, it was the All Star team. It was, it was just bam. And I, I remember reading that first issue numerous times, and and you know, I. And, you know, as, as a kid, you're just thinking, you're just looking at it, and you're just thinking, you know, just wow. And then, because I was a Marvel head until, yeah. you know, I got to the teens. And, yeah. and and just the idea of all this bombastity and then action and and, and just the four colors. And, and, and it just probably Secret Wars, I could think of just early, early time. Yeah. Hulk, you know, Spider Man. Spider Man was pretty much the book that everybody would pick up when I was younger. You know, that was the book I would pick up. Uh, and the Hobgoblin, you know, the, the, oh yeah, the, you know, the Hobgoblin story, and 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 trying to decide who the Hobgoblin was, the big mystery of it. You know, that I was. Remember, you're a little bit younger than me. I yeah, think about yeah. that. I'm like, wait, no, not that. Yeah. So when you got when you got the Secret Wars, was it was it appealing to you that basically everybody was in that? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I was introduced to everybody. I mean, it was just like anything that I'm. It probably the the whole marketing ploy probably worked on me. I right. Mean, it was all these different Marvel characters that I hadn't been reading. It's like, oh, I want to read him. Oh, I want to. You know, it's, it's it's it was one of those things where it, you just kind of the interest level, you know, kind of cranked. And and I went from you know here here and there on the newsstand to making sure every month I picked up these books. The continuing adventure, the never-ending saga, you know that kind of a thing, and I said it was just—I was just hooked. It, it, it was like a drug to me. I spent every dime I had on, you know. I, I, Mom and Dad didn't have to worry about drugs with me because, and alcohol because I had. All <laughs> that you're a paper, you're a paper crackhead. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I, I didn't have any money left for the, the vices of this world. Comics were enough for me, so. Would you I had no social life, you? but. <laughs> What was that? Would you say that's still true that a lot of your money still goes to college? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. I mean, other than bills, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you can see what I just pulled from a con. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I, it's it's still to this day, you know, many, many years later. Yeah. I mean, it, it's part of it. And, and it just, and like I said, you know, the, just the whole nature of it, I wanted to make them. Yeah. You know, I want, at first, you know, I wanted to make them for Marvel and DC. But then you know, like, you know, you're 17 or 18, you, and you really discover the indie scene. You start, why am I going to do it for these guys? I want yeah. to do it for myself. That's yeah. to me. That's the origin story. Like the yeah. I guess yes. it, when you discovered comics is not necessarily the origin story. No, no disrespect intended. But the real origin story is like, I don't want to draw for Marvel and DC. I don't want to draw Spider Man. I want to draw Mike Belcher Man. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. that's yeah. to me that's the key. That, well, that you know, the, the mainstream is the gateway. The ga it yeah. introduces you to the medium, and then when you right. get into, you know, when you finally get access to a, a, a comic store, you know, a direct market store, and then you see the other books over here right. in the corner, and you know, you guys, Malibu, I mean, Dark Horse, you know, the, the books that I was introduced to in, in, in the late eighties, you know, I started seeing. Instead of down there, copyright, trademark, Marvel Comics, it said trademark, copyright, Paul Chadwick, uh, Mike Barron, and, and, and Steve Rude. You know, it, yeah. was, it was those kind of books that's like, hey, I, I, maybe I could come up with something myself. You know, maybe that it, it uh, you know, Superman's great. And, and maybe a bucket list I'd like to draw Superman one day. Yeah. But 
the idea of doing it for myself really more appealed to me because then, you know, as the, and of course, like I said, you know, image wasn't too long after that. Yeah. Right. You know, that was such a seismic thing, whether you like the books or not. I was, you know, I at least respected right. the thing behind it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the books or not, it was an important event in the yeah. industry. Right. Yeah. It really a couple, shook things up. Yeah. Got a couple really up. quick comments here. Uh, Carrie says, Hey, hey, Roland and panelists and pops, if you're working. Hey, Carrie, so good of you to stop by and say hello. Good of you to see us. Uh, it's good of you to say hello. <laughs> you to see us. <laughs> David Rio says, hi, all. What's up, David? And then uh, David A. Scuteres says, is Atlas Comics the only comics company created out of spite? The only public comic book company created out of spite. I think some comic book companies were created out of spite, and we just don't know. Right. Yeah. But I Atlas, is, Atlas is the only one that marketed itself as we hate Stan Lee. So here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I, I think probably there's some independent comic, uh, small press sort of like, hey, I'm, I mean, Malibu's got some stories, you know, right? Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> that, well, I, that, think, I, I think a lot of in, a lot of indie comic book companies were created because they'd been cut off from Marvel and DC. Yes. But yeah. I don't know, but I can't say that they created them out of spite or anger. It was just like, right. this is, the, the, these doors are closed. This door, the barrier to entry in the direct market is open. Yeah. I'm going to go in. Was yeah, uh, his image created out of spite? Those guys are like, shoot, we're tired of giving it, Marvel it, and DC it, well, the it, money. I want, we're, we want, I don't think money. it was spite. I think it, it was, well, you know, I, I think it was spite for Todd. Yeah, for Todd. Uh -huh. Because Todd is, Todd has said on the record that his, I just wanted that, to watch that he was going to do yeah, what he wanted. I mean, he made the same image offer to uh, Terry Stewart. That image was making to itself, and Terry told them that the the characters are way more important than the creators. Yeah. And so I think I think Todd set out to prove him wrong, and I, wow. I can't yeah. I can't speak for the other guys, but Todd has said that publicly like a hundred times. Yeah. yeah. And I so I would Todd. I would say Todd, and Todd has also said in the past that even if there wasn't an Image Comics, Todd was going to do Spawn with or without anybody else. Like he was going to he was going to either self publish and have his own one title company, or he was going to join the Image guys. But he was leaving, and he was going to do his own thing. Yeah. yeah, and that I don't. You could say that spite. You could say that's angry. You could say that's really smart businessman decision because he was at the he was sort of at the peak of his Marvel popularity. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it's basically like a uh, uh, a uh, high quality athlete who had basically a banner year and wants to test the free agent market and see what the, his maximum price is, and so that's that's where Todd goes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was pretty much at the top at Marvel. I mean, but the point yeah. is, I don't think he was going to go any further at Marvel. I mean, when he, he no, yeah. I mean, he was the top. Yeah, so, I mean, if he was going to go anywhere else, he had to go out. I mean, yeah, I think that's it because direction. otherwise, otherwise, you start that sort of thing where, like, an actor with a hit movie, like your next movie doesn't do so well, and then all of a sudden, you're people start talking about how you've lost your step. So he right. made he made the right call at the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so too. Um, uh, I'll, I'll go next. So, um, so, so, so to answer your question, I don't remember the first comic I read either. Um, I remember the ones that, that, that were memorable, to me, but I know that I had read things like Ricky Rich and hot stuff and, and, uh, maybe even some of the Archies. I don't remember a whole lot of the Archies. But I do have a couple of others, uh, queued up here. This is the first Avengers that uh, that stood out to me as me going, wait, <laughs> it's Frankenstein. <laughs> there is something, and, and and this is Frankenstein is probably the reason I got this in the first place, right? But it's the it was, and I, I think I still have the copy. It was I, I traded a Fantastic Four for it, and I don't remember the Fantastic Four, right? Uh, I traded a Fantastic Four for it because I didn't like the Fantastic Four, but the Avengers were cool. This copy right here that I have was folded in half. And then folded it once again and stuck in my back pocket. Oh, you're brutal! I, look, you I are was, brutal. I was in, you know, I was in uh, middle school probably at the time, uh, elementary school. I don't remember exactly. You, you need, you need to be bullied as a child. <laughs> the other one is the Amazing Spider-Man, and uh, of course, this introduced all kind of cool stuff. Here's the Doctor Octopus. One of the reasons, probably, Doctor Octopus is probably. Uh, my all-time favorite Spidey villain. 
Uh, he was the first one, the first villain that I saw Spidey fight. Now, I knew who Spider-Man was, right? But I didn't know really anything about him until having uh, gotten this issue. And of well, look course, how, look how well placed the tentacles are too. They really, they really draw you in the way they look yes. around the balloon and the way they. Yep. Throw. Yep. Uh, it's just a gorgeous cover. So, uh, and of course this was right after Gwen Stacy died. Right. Um, and, and I didn't learn all that, of course, until, you know, all the captions was that, you know, if you, you, you knew this too, if you read issue so-and-so and I'm like, I, I don't know. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. I don't know. I want to know. Right. And um, so they were brilliant about doing to get me hooked, right? But now, so so those are the first sort of memorable comics to me. But now making comics, I'll be honest with you, I started making comics when I was in about the sixth grade. Uh, I I still have them. In fact, uh, Tommy knows this story. I met my good pal uh, Barry when I was in the sixth grade. And Barry and I used to make comic books together. Now, I had uh, a couple years ago, uh, probably more like five or six years ago now, I said something about, hey, I, I, I'm thinking about scanning those, those pages and putting them online. I said, Barry, you, you care if I do that? And he goes, yeah, if you want to remain my friend, you won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but now I, I actually have, uh, for me, a total of about 12 issues. I drew them and I, I'm, I'm not an artist, right? I drew them. The first half of them were all on notebook paper, right? Cause I mean, I'm a kid in school. I'm just drawing stuff. And here's the weird thing. I made up all my own characters. I, I wasn't drawing Superman. I wasn't drawing Spider-Man, even though I love those characters. Now I will admit the first characters that I, I came up with are clearly, many of them are clearly carbon copies. Right? Man spider. Yeah, man spider. Uh, you know, so so there was, but but Spider I was making dude. because no one told me not to. No one told me you're supposed to be drawing Spider Man or Superman, right? I just said, right. cool. I, I like these comic things. I want to make some, and so I'm like, well, what do you do? Well, let me just make up somebody, right? So I just made up. You know, again, I'm not saying they were all really smart. I'm just, but I made them up, and so for me, it goes back to sixth grade and i think part of it is i enjoyed comics so much i wanted i wanted to create that for me right i mean i that's i was doing it for me i wouldn't no one was, I was looking at my comics you know uh I, you know barry was but it you know but it was just me and Barry was the only other person I knew that read comics. <laughs> you know, of course, you got to remember this was a long time ago, and 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 comic right. comic geeks didn't rule. We we were literally the, we were the guys who sat in the back of the, the uh, with our history books, right, with comics inside, so looking around, <laughs> make sure nobody was seeing you. You know, um, but I made them because because I wanted to be part of of that because I enjoyed it, and I wanted to tell things that uh, you know. I wanted, there were things I wanted to see in the comic books. Or, oh, I want to see if this, and they may have already happened. I don't know. But I was like, oh, I want to tell this story. What if this happened? And so I just made my characters do that, you know? Uh, oh, Carrie, you are so very nice. I'm looking forward to your comic coming out, Roland. Thank you so very much, Carrie. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my uh, origin story. Uh, who wants to go next? Well, I'll Hurry. go. Okay, I'll go because this will make everybody mad now. <laughs> well, we'll sandwich you in between the the, the, the yeah, yeah the I've good got people sandwich in the middle middle there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so so the early comics I remember reading were uh, were Batman and Superman because what would happen is when I was a kid I would get sick. My mom would, I'd stay home from school or whatever, I'd, I'd get a prescription. My mom would go to the corner drugstore to get it filled. She'd bring back some comics. And the comics she would bring back were the ones that she'd heard of before. Right. So she'd they're bring safe, back that. right? Right, they're safe. And it's like, yeah. I know these things. There's Batman, there's Superman, because they're on TV, basically. And they're they're in her brain. And, and if it was World's Finest or Justice League, it was basically a Batman and Superman comic anyway. So she'd bring those home, and I would read them. And I liked them, but they were not, you know, it's always... <laughs> Superman, the world's mightiest mortal or whatever, is, is basically right. solving a locked room mystery. Like, who who, yeah. who could have done this? And then <laughs> and then Batman, the creature of the night, is like fighting a robot dog or whatever. So it's never, it didn't really, you know, there were just things to do. And 
but then I discovered Kirby when Kirby went over to DC. And and because I'm older than a lot of you people, the uh, um, it, it it connected with me because a it was new. There was it wasn't issue four hundred or something or issue three hundred or something. It was it was issue number one, which I liked, and I felt like I was going to start at the same place as everybody else. Yeah, and so I liked those. And Kirby's artwork by then, uh, first inked by Coletta, but then inked by Mike Royer, was really just like eye popping. Like you would turn the page on a Kirby book. And this stuff would just like jump out at you in the yeah. way that, you know, when, when Superman solves the mystery of the hotel room, it's not as exciting as watching this huge demon bug with a giant electric uh, rod of some kind zapping some aliens. Or whatever. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's a totally different experience. So I was hooked. And then I discovered that these things come out all the time. And I would started to haunt the drugstores and the 7-Elevens and the supermarkets or whatever to try to get them. And I remember that I had missed an issue of Mr. Miracle because I got like issue seven and then I got that issue nine came out and I thought, eight, where's eight? I got to have eight. And so, <laughs> yeah. so I got a, I got on my bike and I spent like two days driving. To, I, and I didn't tell my parents where I was going because it's like, I just drove all over town. Until Stopping could, at every convenience store, every drug store. Every convenience, at every possible place. I thought a comic book could be, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flipping through everything in the rack trying to get it. And so I, yeah. and I, I finally found it because I couldn't read number nine until I had number eight. That's how, of course not. That's how much it was infested into my brain at that point. And so that's, it all goes back to Kirby. And yeah. so that's, and you know, yeah, I read that stuff now, and I can sort of transform myself back into that kid again and see it. But you know, the comics themselves are not necessarily great in right. terms of writing or whatever but they're great comics right they really yeah. have they have an energy they have you know there's a there's all this weird stuff going on and you know the dialogue is a little clunky or whatever but man eh, you know it's comics and they're right they, so so i got hooked and then uh after a while i sort of as i became a, an older <laughs> an older person and went away to college I stopped reading them because I, like most people, I discovered uh, alcohol and women and <laughs> and jobs and college demands. <laughs> and those, those, those evil things took all my money. I didn't have any money left over for comics. And then um, I got, when I, I moved to Connecticut so I could be close to New York City because I was going to be a cartoonist. I had had, uh, I had some cartooning skills and I'd gotten stuff published and I, w I wanted to do that and see if I could make it, make a living at it. But I'd also worked in graphic design at uh, at my college newspaper, back when college newspapers existed and back when they yeah. still had a, a design person. And so I that ended up getting me a job at Fanographics Books, the, the alternative comic book publisher. And so I became an art director for now, them did because you, they- Did you know Fanographics before? Yes, I mean, they, okay. were in, they were in the same town as me. I lived in Stanford, Connecticut. They live in Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, my friends and I socialized with them in, in like non-comics way. We went out to dinner together. We went out to movies together. We did. We hung out together, but we weren't working for them, and I right. wasn't working for them. But they needed a they needed a, 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 a an art director of some kind, and I got the job. And I didn't care. I just, I needed the job, and so I went there. And I started I started working for Fan Graphics, and then I and that led and and during that time I met I I had the kind of access to people that comic book people would love to have had at that time. Like I knew Mike Gold at DC. Wow. I knew Mike, I knew Mike Flynn who ran the marketing department. I knew Linda yeah. Roback who worked in the marketing department. I knew Neil Posner and Rich Bruning who were the art directors at DC. I met Bill Sienkiewicz. I, I knew Howard Chaikin. I, Gil Kane would drop by the office like every third day. And wow. all, all these people around me that were actually in comics making comics, I could care less. It's like I didn't, oh, I, had, man. I had all this access and all these advantages. And I could have just gone to any one of them and said, "Hey, you know what? I would like a, I would like to have one of your stupid jobs at DC, where I just <laughs> photocopy stuff and make letter corrections, or whatever. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you let me in the club?" And I never did that. I and I could have gotten one, and I could have gone to that path where I become like an assistant editor or an editor right. or you know a freelance writer, or whatever. Didn't occur to me. Didn't interest me. Wasn't it, you know none of that. And then, no, were you still reading comics at the time, though, though Tom? Or, or well, here's because you said you'd given them up, right? So, were you I, I did was, you go back I, to reading them? I went back to reading them with two comics that came out. One is that uh, I started reading Perez Wolfman's Teen Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, because that that's a that's a signature that's as important 
to that time period as Dark Knight was to its time period. Yeah. Um, and as Kirby was to me in when he moved to DC. And so that's a that's a seminal work for me anyway. And then um, when I was working uh, for Fanagraphics, um, and I knew Mike Gold, and Mike Gold had left DC and gone to First Comics or whatever. He right. sent me he sent me the first issue of Chaikin's American Flag in photocopy. Oh yeah! Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and because he wanted he wanted people to review it and he wanted to be he wanted to be passed around the office and I got it and I read it I read it in black and white before anybody else saw it in color wow. and I thought you know I'm not I'm not as smart as Howard in any in any in any way like there's he's like a Jeopardy contestant and I'm like a Price is Right guy and so <laughs> and so um, but that that book really connected with me. It, it, it's the perfect book that came along at the time I needed that kind of book to come along. Yeah. So I started, I started reading American flag and those two things got me back into comics, but I just, I just became more selective. Like before I read everything yeah. I get my hands on and now it's like, there's only so much time in, in the day. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to pick and choose these things. And so that's, those are the ones that sort of got me back into comics. Huh. And then, so I can continue if you want. There's, yeah, there's yeah. Any more? <laughs> let, 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 let me run through. Carrie's got a couple. Of, Go so hold your thought, right? Uh, Carrie says it has a pig in it, Roland. I already love it. <laughs> <laughs> she says my first experience of comics is the one that came free with the weekend newspaper, Beano Comic. I, I don't, <laughs> is that British? That, that's got to be British. That must be British. I don't know that. I don't know that one. Do you, yeah. Mike shook his head yes. Do you know that, Mike? Yeah, I think it's like a. Uh, just a feature in a comic strip, I think. I, I may be wrong. I, I don't. I, <laughs> I don't know that. I, I, love, I this is one of my favorites, though, Carrie. With charm like that, Tom, uh, that you didn't become part of DC is shocking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, well, that's the, the people who meet me do do say I'm very charming. So the, uh, yeah, it is British. <laughs> it is British. There we go. So then, so then, uh, Fantagraphics moved from Connecticut to California. Southern California, and they brought me along. Oh, um, and they, they that's how you ended along. up out there, huh? Yeah, they and they only brought me along because the other guy, the other art director, uh, wasn't coming. <laughs> they so, said they quit. Right. So they <laughs> so they said they said, well, you know, you could come out with us because you know the other guy's gone, so you can take his place. So I said, okay, fine. I always wanted to live in Southern California, and I didn't. Again, I didn't care about the comics necessarily that Fantagraphic was doing. They were fine, but you know. I was not I was not married to that kind of work. So but somebody said you want to come to California and I'll I yeah, I'll come to California. Well so then, then of I, course at that time comics were uh, comics were New York City was comics. So you right. weren't you were leaving right. you were going the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> I was going I was going I was basically going to show business instead of yeah. comics. And so then uh they set up in Southern California and I still worked for them and that's when I met the the Hernandez brothers. Uh, Jaime and Gilbert and Mario oh. and uh, wait, so you uh, met them? Oh yeah, they used to come into the office all the time because that's how they would drop off work. What? Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. I didn't know they that. They would come in, and and Gil Kane moved out too, so he would drop by all the time. And then um, uh, 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 the Lloyd Llewellyn guy, Daniel Klaus, okay, and uh, Peter Bag would come out on occasion. And uh, there was just there, there was a ton of people who would just show up at the office. And they're all and and I'm surrounded by guys making their own comics and getting them published by Fantagraphics. Didn't occur to me to make my own comic. It's like so really. So, but I'd met I'd met Dave Obrich at uh, right. Fantagraphics, and Dave Obrich had left Fantagraphics when they after they moved to California, and he'd gotten a job at Sunrise Distributors in I even Southern Southern California, yeah. and. He'd gotten uh, Scott Rosenberg convinced to start a comic book company. And Dave called me up and said, hey, you want to start a comic book company with me? And I said, well, I don't particularly like this job. I like your job better. And so, <laughs> so but again, I'm not, I wasn't driven to make comics. Do I, I have to? Right. It's like, well, your job making comics is better than the job I currently have making comics. So I'll just, I'll, I'll follow you. And then I went, I went to Malibu Comics and then, then we made like a thousand comics. Yeah. So what was the first comic that you actually did? You, you, Tom Mason, that, uh, I mean, everyone knows Tom Mason's Dinosaurs for Hire. Okay. Right. But what was, was that your first one? No, no. What happened is okay. that the, uh, so. 
Because I know it was a different. I know it was a different comic at first. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up dominating this thread, and I really shouldn't. <laughs> but the so I was friends with Jan Sternod. Okay. Who had also moved from Kansas to California to work for Fantagraphics out out west, and um, he had created Dalgona, and he was starting a comic book. That's company. good. That's a good book. That's a great book. Yeah. And I don't, and why that never became a, a TV show or a movie, I I have no idea. You'll appreciate and, this. I, I never had the full run because they were hard to find. Right. Uh, at one of our last shows, I picked up. It's all. It's still in the back because I haven't opened it up yet. But I picked up the full run uh, ah. of it. Yeah. It's so good. I'm very excited yeah. about that. And um and Jan Sternod was looking for projects, and there were three of us were sitting around at lunch one day. It was it was Jan, it was myself, and it was a guy named Mike Valerio, who was one of my best right. friends. And uh, Mike had pitched him this idea for a comic book called Elvis Undercover, right? Which is basically Elvis Presley as an undercover cop, right? And because there's a there's a there's a famous photo of Elvis shaking hands with Richard Nixon where Richard Nixon deputizes Elvis in the war on drugs and wants you to be, you know, wants you to be my, you know, unofficial white house deputy sheriff or whatever, and gives him a badge or whatever. And the premise from Mike was that, well, what if Elvis just took that way too seriously? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes back to, uh, to, uh, uh, Graceland and he does his music stuff during the day. And by night though, he's got a cop car, He's got a badge. He's got a gun. He just starts driving around fighting crime. What would that be like? And so, um, and so Mike was starting to was starting to write it, but then he got busy at his day job, which was working as a producer at NBC. So he said, "Nah, I'm going to crap out. I'm not going to do it." And Jan said, "Well, would you like to do it?" And I <laughs> and so Jan Jan sat down with me and he he showed me how to write a comic book script. Um, so I had a master class from Jan Sternod. And then I wrote a first draft of the Elvis thing for Jan to publish. And then Jan gave me notes on it. So now I got a second masterclass in how to write comic books. And uh, the comic never came out. It got about a, uh, a fourth of the way done before Jan got scared of the Elvis people. Yeah. Um, for obvious reasons, as people, yeah. as people would, because they're apparently they're extremely litigious. And so, um, but it never, so it never got published. How do I breathe? <laughs> no, no, no. Right. breathe, Tom. You ready? Come up oh. for air while talk. Oh. I've I've done two the scary shots. person slamming you. I've done two before shots we, before we even started. <laughs> so, but the, that's what I found out. I found out I really liked creating a comic book. Yeah, yeah. And by by actually doing it, so I didn't have a desire to do it, but once I had done it, it was like oh, that was fun. That, that was really fun, yeah. and also, and the fun part of it wasn't. Me, because the, the part about writing that I hated was the idea of, oh, I'm going to sit alone in my little grotto, or hunched over my little desk and my dip my pen in the ink and I'm going to scrawl out something and it's going to be, you know, this horrible nightmarish thing. Um, <clears throat> but well, creating comics was a collaborative thing. Yeah. Where I was, I was doing stuff. I was giving it to Jan and Jan was giving me stuff back and it, it would, it would build up over time and it became better. And I liked that part of it. But also, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, on, on a lot of the writing that you do, don't you have because because prototype was you and Lynn, uh, yeah. and and I know that uh, you and uh, Danko Dan Danko, you do a yes. lot of uh, a lot of co-writing together. Yes, and I for the same reason I don't I don't like the part where I sit alone. Yeah, and so yeah. I like I like the part I like the part where I turn stuff over to somebody, whether it's an artist <laughs> or another co-writer or a producer or somebody. And I get some feedback. Carrie, please do not encourage Tom to be a rapper. <laughs> Listen, I don't have, here's the thing. I don't have any desire to be a rapper. Oh, no. I don't. But you would take the job if it was offered, though. That's, That's right. right. If you're, are you moving me to Southern California? Then I'll be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, David Ace Gutierrez says, same with him on American Flag. It opened up a whole world for me. It, also, it helped my mom didn't approve of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. See? yeah so so, so, uh, I, I so elvis it became it. dinosaurs for hire later on though didn't elvis it? Yeah, yeah so elvis became that's dinosaurs the part i knew right and that and that wasn't even the first comic that i wrote oh what was that the first comic i wrote was um i wrote battle to the death number three okay because what had happened is that uh i, I don't know that one no, it's it well here's the thing is that 
I don't even know if I should talk about it. But the uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Tommy, that sounds like his scum of the earth, right? Right. Oh. So, <laughs> so, uh, or she devils on wheels. That so, was yours. Uh, that was mine. Battle to the Death was the three issue miniseries that was supposed to come out from the old Eternity Comics. Uh huh. That was okay. before it was affiliated with Dave and myself ah. and Chris. And so the first two issues had come out, and then we took over the Eternity imprint. But Battle to the Death number three was still on the schedule to come out. And so we got the pages in from an artist named Frank Turner, already penciled and inked. And the guy who had worked Marvel style mm. um, didn't have the time or the interest in dialoguing the third issue. And I thought... The Frank would, Turner? Uh, who do you think is Frank Turner? Uh, the the really awesome anchor dude from uh, yeah. How did that, how did that thumb get up there? Who yeah, I that? just I saw that. Where did that come from? How, where did that come I from? Know. I didn't. I don't know either. That that was kind of cool. Bob, Whoever... that was in your your panel. I, yeah. I I don't do it again. Do it again. Do it again. You're the I, head I didn't do it. But I'm not sure. It looked pretty cool. Whoever whoever did that bubble thumb, do it again and tell us how you did it. <laughs> well, they <laughs> were pointing to the dinosaurs for hire thing. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's coincidence. No, or not. Frank, Frank Turner was a, a a really awesome anchor. I want to say from Alabama. Yeah, is it is that that's who he was? That's who he was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. So, so he had penciled and inked it, and we didn't have we didn't have the dialogue, and we didn't have the script. We didn't have the outline. <laughs> so, so, so you had to we, make it up. And we were we were, we were on it. deadline. We were on deadline, <laughs> and because it the book had to go to press, and so. Um, we found an, a letterer who could do the lettering as a, as paste ups over the original art. And Chris Alm and I uh, went out drinking one night and we wrote <laughs> a script. And so that became the first published thing. Very cool. I did not and know I think, that. I think if you're went a fan downhill of, if, from there. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're a fan of Battle of the Death number one and two, you probably hate my guts because I didn't read one and two before I wrote number three. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh man! <laughs> so, I I treated it I treated it as like a National Lampoon's Fumetti, where I just <laughs> made stuff up. I made stuff up as I went along, and uh, it's still it still is a story. Yeah, and it's but it's it is you you can see the origins of everything I've ever written in the dialogue for that. <laughs> uh, so there, that's that's pretty cool. Uh. Who's who's next? Roberta, Tommy, R Roberta or Tommy? Go, Roberta. Oh, she's got her mic off or something. Yeah, your mic's off, Roberta. She's like, nope. My mic's off now for a reason. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go. <laughs> wait, wait, try it out, oh, Roberta. There she is. Oh, she she doesn't want to tell us. <laughs> she, it's, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's like, okay, I've got technical problems. I can't. I can hear you guys talking, and I really want to respond, but I can't. <laughs> All right, Tommy. While Roberta fixes her uh, technical issues, so, what's your origin story? I, I wanted to make comics because I didn't want to get a real job. There, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that many times. I've never, never. Uh, lied about that no it was uh i, I got it i got liking uh comics from from the uh the funny paper the funny you know the the sunday papers you know um all that uh peanuts and all that kind of stuff back when i was a little kid and i always could draw not good but i always was able to to draw since i was little uh little little thomas not that i was ever little because i've always been six foot tall <laughs> but I always could uh, always always could draw. But it wasn't till um, like uh, we were talking about when you first started picking up comics. Um, it was God, it had to be in the second, third, fourth grade somewhere in there. I was I remember I remember clearly because it was a, a there was a dude uh, one, same grade or you know same age as me that when you know we were in some apartments. He was further down. And he uh, he was a big Superman fan. And he was like, who's your favorite comic book guy? And I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to have a favorite comic book guy. <laughs> and then 
And then it was, uh, you know, I've always, I've always liked Spider Man because I remember, y'all remember, and I've said this many times on here. You remember the Electric Company? Oh yeah, that, yeah. that kid show. You remember they had one of the character, one of the cast members, whatever you want to call it, one of the the actors on the show. That he would come on there as dressed as Spider Man, and he would slink around in his suit. And go, woo, woo. Well, you they, remember all they that? Had, they had a little always, segment, didn't they? Yeah, they always like. Yeah, they had a little segment, yeah, yeah, a little like segment just the Electric Company uh, segment. Yeah, spot. yeah, yeah. It was and, short. Um, so I've, i you know, I've, I was like, well, I, if I've got to look, I've got to have a favorite character. It's our favorite comic book. It's Spider Man, of course. And then he was like, show me your collection. And I'm like, I don't have any. <laughs> and then you remember this is like third or fourth grade or whatever in New yeah. Orleans. And and I'm like, where did you get your where you get your books from? And he was, um, he was like, we'll get them from a the, the big. Uh, the big uh, store there, the where you could get the books was uh, uh, K and B Drugs. I don't know. Yeah, if they, I remember K and B. Yeah, K&B, and it was like miles away from the house. And mom wasn't taking. That's not the war. My my mom would take us to go. And then I remember, all of a sudden, I had some comic books. And mom's like, "Where did you get these comics?" And um, did you get them from? And I can't remember the kid's name. And I'm like, "No, I wouldn't got them from K and B Drugs." And she goes. How did you get those? And I'm like, I went over there. <laughs> it was miles away, <laughs> crossing over all kind of busy streets. And you know, this was where they were. They, you know, but we got an allowance. You know, yep. a couple of bucks a, a week allowance, and the comics were only twenty five cents. So I, I ended up with a big, a good little stack of comics. By the time she knew, I instead of instead of having Playboys under your bed, I had comic books. Right? <laughs> And and she's like, "How are you doing? Where are you going?" And she was really upset. I remember her being very upset with. Uh, I would bring my dad, bring Chuck with me, and we were. Chuck was three years younger than me. Right, <laughs> way off over where I shouldn't have been going, and crossing streets that I shouldn't have been crossing just to get to that K and B drugstore. All on your bicycle, right? Yeah, was, yeah no, do I? All on your bicycle, bicycle, right? I, sometimes it was on bike. Sometimes we just walk. And we're stupid. We oh, you, I've told you many times that the yeah. stuff that Chuck and I did as kids. They, it's, 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 man, we're lucky to be alive. <laughs> All the stupid. But are you, stuff. are you as a, are you as a kid when you learn the rules of safety? Are you supposed to put those rules in the place and actually cross streets? <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. they, they teach us how to cross the street. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't tell you. We we did. I'm here, so I yeah. must have learned something. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get killed. But so, yeah, we'd go way out of the way. I mean, it was miles. I've I've since been back to that area, and I've I've even showed my wife where we live once. You know, in those apartments, and then where the where I'd get the comics from. And it's just like, how did you go way over there? And I'm like, we're idiots. I don't know. I, I'm, <laughs> and, I'm gonna, for, Roberta, you get your sound fixed. Nope, she's still nope. talking. But then it was, and then it was off and on. Um, you know, I'd get books, and then we'd move. We moved a bunch, so I didn't really. I still have a couple of those books back when I was a kid, and we moved a bunch. And um, not that mom ever threw away any of the stuff; they just got lost, right? And then it, and then in, uh, then in high school, I ended up getting some more books, and then I, you know, but it wasn't till college. And when was going to USM where I met Roland and um, we all started playing role playing games and stuff. And the people on the, you know, on the floor of the dorm that we were, that I was on, um, they were, uh, we liked to, they, they, you know, I, I played D and D a bunch, but they really liked to play a superhero role playing game. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I like superheroes. Yeah. This is really cool. <laughs> and they're like, well, we're going to run to the shop. It's comic book day. And I'm like, where's a shop that's got comic books? What do you want? <laughs> Yeah, so we go. Yeah, we go, and I'm like, "Wow, this is really cool." <laughs> Got a, and um, yeah, and then I just started getting the comics again, and that's how I met Roland. Then, but it was really when Roland and Stephen Butler and Mitch Bird uh, they were breaking into the comic business, and and I was I was a computer science guy. And I saw them getting responses back, and I've said this many times on the show. Uh, that they were getting responses back from 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 
comic companies, you know, and I'm like, shoot, if those idiots can do it, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and eventually this idiot started doing it too. So, yeah, my uh, wife got out of school. My wife said, here, you can try a little bit, try and see what you see, if you can get some work. And I was able to start getting work. And, you know, Tom gave me some work over at Malibu mm-hmm. and was doing stuff with, uh, with Roland. And I did a tons of background work for jimmy pomiati yep and you know and it was uh probably could have made more money doing computer programming but i've stuck probably. with the comics for a little while renee's renee was like yeah give it a shot if that's what you want to do and i'm like yeah let me try it and yeah. so it goes back to i know i've been rambling but it not not as much as tom did but it goes back <laughs> to and you've been, you've been what i said at the beginning <laughs> I didn't. I was just trying to do something not to get a real job. So I've been, I've been doing it for thirty seven years. Well, guys, I got to tell y'all, we have hit a record tonight. Uh, I'm looking up here. Uh, I, I, y'all can't see it, but I got a little tracker right here that tells me how many are viewing live. Yep. Uh, currently listening to us right now are forty eight people. Dang, what's that, up? That, what's that, up? That, I think, that, we, we, I think we've it's had, clear that Mike Belcher should pick the topic every week. Right? <laughs> I think, this is what I think. This is how I'm determining. This is I'm looking at the data. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's the, the I, whole I, next I'll month. Leave it I leave it yeah. at that. I, I'm doing comics because I didn't want to get a real job. Yeah. Can you hear but me? You do have a real job. Yay! We can hear Roberta. Yes. All right. Yay, oh, there we go. There, we go. <laughs> there, there hasn't been much silence for me to break in and check it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, according <laughs> according to our audience, that's I my know. fault. <laughs> no, it's good, but your story is great, Tom. <laughs> you know, you said you said it make people mad, but really, it's you know, you hurt yourself for a while, but you got into something you loved eventually. That's right. yeah. Tom, Tom had or a you real loved story, what you got into and mine was, eventually. I just was making stuff. Yeah, up. Well, it took it took a it took a while to actually find the thing that would connect with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. because I think if I'd gotten laid off at Fanagraphics and Dave Obrich hadn't gotten Malibu Comics started, I don't know what I would have done. I would wow. have gotten like, I would have gotten the real job that uh, Tommy tries to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I would have been your Starbucks barista or your, you know, your, your Burger King waiter who talks too much or whatever. I wouldn't have been, hey. you know, a funny <laughs> like fries with your Big some people off at yeah. Starbucks is what you do. That's right. Yeah. It's like, Hey, he did, and I'd be deliberately misspelling your name so I could have a laugh. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> misspelling them on purpose. Because yeah, Tom has to have a laugh. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for Dave Obrich, if it wasn't for Jan Sternod, if it wasn't for moving out to California, I, I don't know. I would just be like a like a lost cause. Well, don't you think all of it happened just the way it had to happen in order for it to fall into place? It's like well, th- th- there's two things. There's that. And then I'm a I'm a firm believer in the power of yes, and yeah. and so, and and even if I don't see it as an opportunity, basically if somebody says, "Hey Tom, do you want to move from New York to California? We'll pay for it," I would say yes, even if yeah. even if the yeah. even if the thing in California was sort of vague and disconnected, I would do it. And so it's an adventure. Um, it is because and it, and I I bring that into the bigger part of my life, but I also bring it into the smaller part of my life. Like I'm not a I'm not a huge NBA basketball fan. And but if, if they I asked you to play, you would say yes. I would say yes. And but I and I and I'm definitely not a fan of the LA Clippers. But a, a friend of mine said, "You want to go to a Clippers game at Staples Center in downtown LA?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't know." And he goes. Well, a client of mine gave me luxury box seats. You still want you want to go? And I I would say yes. And I don't care about the game in any way, but I care about the luxury box. I want to because how many times am I going to get to see a luxury box? Right. You care about right. the experience. And, ha- and how many people who go? Guy. How many people who do go regularly get to experience a, lu- a luxury box? Right. Yeah. It's, it's like so I so I'm walking in like the king of Sweden or whatever because I'm going I'm on the way to luxury box, and and they got. And what you I found, just were wanting to go, nah, 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 nah. I did not, and I did. And so, because the thing about a luxury box, and again, I realize I've co opted the conversation away from Roberta, but <laughs> the thing about a luxury box is, is you, you get a waiter. Really? And I've never, I've never been to a sports event where I had a private box and I had a, there's a sofa, 
there's a dining room table. There's a bunch of, of uh, bar chairs that, you, that overlook the big screen so you can see it. You can watch the game on TV if you want to. And then there's a waiter who comes in and says, can I get – and it's all off all off menu stuff. So you could, you could have a steak wow. or whatever you wanted to. And so it's like, yeah, I'll <laughs> – I'll I'll be the biggest I'll be the biggest pseudo rich a hole possible. Uh, <laughs> so Tom's about uh, the adventure is what yeah. Tom. And so okay, that, Roberta. That's what it was. Now Roberta, okay. go ahead. Well, sure. <laughs> well, it, Roberta, it, don't it, say it, Tom's it, name, and then he won't <laughs> <talk again. laughs> Oh well, well, yeah. It's, it it starts out that. You know, I think I just have been scattered because I loved art as a kid. That was one of the things that just like anything that I could see that someone drew, I just would study it and look at it and just feel like I that's what I want to do. So I didn't know what format I was going to end up doing art in. And it just kind of felt to me that I think one of my one of my fun things I was doing when I was a kid was like, I loved um, making my own Garfield strips, for instance, just like I would just make up stupid jokes. <laughs> and, you know, because they're easy to draw. And, and I was like, you know, just astounded by the comics that I saw. I was like, to me, I thought, I'm not a cartoonist. I like the textures. <laughs> it's right. weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't think I'm an artist. I don't know <laughs> where to put it. You know, and then you know, really studying things like the, um, like the movie concept art that really jazzed me a lot. So I thought maybe that's what I should be gearing towards is just like doing the pre visualization of something, you know. And then somewhere in, in high school, I saw on um, Frank Miller's books with uh, there was a uh, Electra and Daredevil, and I was mm. the art on it just just hit me the right way and i was like yeah. no you can you can kind of paint comics too well you know that just blew me away in a different direction and i thought you know i'm just gonna you know absorb a lot more of that so then i got distracted in college and then all of a sudden <laughs> i i realized that all of my paintings look like comics even the ones i I prefer, you know, like just when I'm doodling, whatever, they just look more comic style. And that's, cool. that, that's where it really hit me. Though. I was like, mm, it's, it's an option, you know, <laughs> still, I didn't explore it. I thought animation, I don't know, something else. And all of a sudden, just this opportunity, I met, I met some of the people hiring from Malibu and it, it was like, this is it. This is what I, I want to have fun doing this and learn a lot more about it. And it just, the whole process was amazing. And then of course the people kept me there and you know, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, was a, really... a good place to a good first place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For I, a first I, job, I it's pretty so. great. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, and you were so, no, but you were already a comic, uh, comic reader before you saw the Frank Miller stuff, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, not heavily. Like I was a, book reader more than a comic reader yeah. so like yes i like comics but it was mixed in to pretty much everything else i was an avid reader for yeah you know so i didn't dial in only the comics so that was one of the things that really hit me later was i'm like wow so many people just really really had fun during the time that you're free enough to read and i didn't read enough of them and i can't now <laughs> now, do, do you remember your first uh your first comics or the first memorable ones to you obviously the frank miller one well i mean i mean i liked compilations but the first things i i liked was things like mad magazine you know that were like just lots of little bits and strips yeah. and things like that um but i think the actual like the comic comic was spider-man oh cool very cool yeah, so that was like the first, and that was because I walked into Seven Eleven. I'm like, I gotta get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh and shoot, just, who, who was the guy who always, uh, uh, the Mad Magazine guy who always drew the pinkies up? Oh, Don Martin. Oh, Don God. Martin. Oh, I love that guy. That guy was that guy was great. Yes, he had yeah. the best sound effects. And he oh had, man, 
Mm-hmm. I have I, I have several Don Martin uh, trade pa- uh, uh, no no not trade papers just the paperback the regular paperback yeah I have I have a collection of the best of his stuff somewhere like really? a big eight and a half by eleven thing of of some of his stuff and it's all I I if ever I mean I'm not really a down person anyway but if ever I'm feeling you know boohoo <laughs> the uh, I pull that book out. And it, um, it cheers. It's 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 like cocaine or something. It just cheers me right up. <laughs> His sound effects, so like you yeah. said, they are fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think that's a thing. <laughs> no. Yeah. I. You know, this is a whole other topic uh, for another day. But I, I think comics without sound effects are is like going to a movie without a soundtrack. Well, it, what's what's funny is it it like Don Martin worked his sound effects in so they become part of the art. Yes, and if you yeah, watch, they were all shaped. Yeah, and if you look so. if you look at somebody like like Howard Chaykin, who always who generally works with Ken Brusenak, the the lettering and the sound effects are incorporated into the d- design of the page. Yeah, so it becomes it becomes part of the storytelling as opposed to just being slapped on balloons, and so it it the way certain people do it, it really becomes an art form. Yeah. And so yeah. I like that. I, I don't really like sound effects where, because I've seen old comics where they try really hard to put sound effects in, but it's like really tiny. It's just sort of off in the corner. It's like, oh, bam, or whatever. And <laughs> it doesn't really, it doesn't really impact you. But then like the Kirby sound effects or um, some of the guys who really know how to uh, incorporate that into the art, uh, they're the best. John yes. Workman. Oh, yeah, John yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes, that guy. Yeah, work like, Simonson, uh, he, you can't beat that. Yes, because he used to be Simon. He used to be the Simons and what Bruzenak is to Chaykin. Yeah, where they were just, they were like in sync. They were like a like an old married couple making a comic book page. Must be on the on the uh, Pete uh, for Silver Line Team Up Two. Pete did a uh, uh, the whole panel was a sound effect, and yeah, uh, cool. it, the one you're working on now, isn't it, Roberta? Um, uh, I'm working on Champ Fury one, yeah, yeah, number two. Right? Yeah, number two. Yeah, I was flipping through number one trying to go. I know. I saw, what, what issue was it on? Yeah, it was in the second issue though. But the whole the whole panel is a sound effect, and I'm like, oh, this is, mm-hmm. it's, it's just like a blam or something. I forget what it is, yeah. but it's the 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 blam becomes the panel borders, and it's just it's gorgeous. It's yeah. Durango used to use a lot of that stuff too. He would. Yeah. He would. Uh, and then Neil Adams would make fun of Stranko in in a response book. So it's just, it just, yeah. Anyway, I've, I've nerded out for a second. <laughs> Carrie said, "Tom, if you worked in Burger King, uh, you would be part of solving the obesity. Uh, all that talking, people would forget why they're there." <laughs> yeah, but then I would be I would be the fattest person in the in the Burger King. I would be the king of Burger King. <laughs> Uh, David A. Scutera says the carrot cake at Staples chef's kiss. <laughs> what? Well, I'm lost now. I missed something, didn't I? The carrot Staples cake Center at Staples. When you went to go see basketball. Oh yeah. Oh, the Staples yeah. Center. See, I was thinking of Staples, the office supply store. So I oh. was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got a good carrot cake there too. <laughs> that's carrot right. cake at Staples. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking because I'll go there now if they have it. <laughs> There. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at there that. There it is. <laughs> there it is right there. See that? Wow. Nice. That's so cool, right? Yeah, yeah that's great. That, that is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's and the once the- again, I don't know. Boy, the inks on that book is so fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. by, by the way, everybody watching who can see this, this is a, this is a page from a Superline Team Up number two, which will be coming to you very, very soon. Yeah, look at that that's great it is, so you can it, see it it's it's uh P- it peter is. peter clinton is the penciler thomas Flormonti is the inker and of course roberta is coloring it man i think i think i think that tommy Flormonti guy is going to go somewhere he's he's yeah, yeah he's got potential he's already been there and left it's, it is that potential <laughs> i think he's out of school uh <laughs> yeah. go mr david ace Gutierrez says that is a brilliant panel there you go i i yeah. agree uh, well, guys, that my clock right tells there, me. The one with the background in it, the one where she, uh, Miss Fury, is looking at the people in the back. Oh, that was all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, here. That's what yeah, I was that trying to do. One, two, three, four, five. That fifth panel, the one where she's looking through the window. God, ah, that was, yes. for some reason, I, I just had the hardest time inking that panel. It's a hard <laughs> angle. Yeah, it sure was. It's, it's. And he, he drew another one where they're looking through 
like windows, somebody from the outside looking inside. And I'm like, Pete, what did you draw? I don't know, figure it out. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was hard as heck. What's, what's but I like it. Looking, I I'm, like the way you draws your eye though. So, you know, yeah, all yeah, the angles yeah. pay, face right to the girl and the baby. If only we could get them back on the show. I know. Mm-hmm. I send him, I send him messages every now and then say, Hey man, we miss you. Come on. <laughs> and he'd write you yeah. back, Z, 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 he would, he's sleeping. <laughs> I bet he'd know what the Beano was. I bet he would have known Beano too, yeah. <laughs> well, y'all, my clock says that uh, we have uh, zipped right through our hour's time. Anybody got any, uh, Mike, any any final thoughts? No, it was really interesting listening to everybody. I mean, you know, uh, again, you know, the origins of our uh, craft – will always be entertaining and hopefully not more entertaining than what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, on Tuesday, uh, that Silver Iron show on Tuesday, they're going to talk about making the leap into comics. The crew discusses the choice to start working in comics. Hey, we've been talking about that tonight. Uh, just Lauren, just what- run this show. Yep. Lauren- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rerun. Learn what considerations you'll need to make and how to get started today. You know, Tom, one of the things you mentioned about moving to uh, uh, from Connecticut to, to Connecticut to uh, California is, you know, I wasn't. Uh, if you had said something to me at one point in time, I, I you want me to move to California? No, you did move no. to California. Don't I know, me. but I'm saying before that, you want me to move to California? No, no. But, but what happened is <laughs> the opportunity came up. With with Chris, and I know he, he talked to you, uh, had talked to y'all, uh, y'all about it. But the opportunity to Chris, hey, come out here and make comics, and right. I'm like, I sure. I don't okay. want to go to California, but you're offering me a full time <laughs> job to make comics. It, and here's here's the difference mm-hmm. between you and me, though, is you came out to California, and you did not embrace the California lifestyle. <laughs> No, no. Of, of the experience no. and i i came out to california and i wanted to go back to my hometown and slap my dad for not moving there sooner when i was a kid <laughs> and so it's like why why are we stuck in this town why did we go to california why didn't you you know why weren't you looking for a better job dad come on <laughs> uh, way too many people way too many people out there for me carrie says uh great stream everyone carrie thank you once again cool. We're hanging out with us. Thank you for your comments. Uh, we try to uh, we try to pop them up there and, and answer questions if you got them. Uh, Wednesday, the Whammers are going to do a show called Color My World. Let's talk color, mood, and color schemes for comics. Mm. That ought to be an Ooh, interesting one. Uh, they ought to, one. yeah, they ought to see if they can't uh, grab Roberta for that one as well on on, uh, on Wednesday. What was because that? Coloring, coloring is is everything as much as lettering is because if you can mm-hmm. you you can see a badly colored it doesn't matter how well a comic book is written if you have poor yep. coloring or poor lettering or it just it's everything is gone no one cares. absolutely hundred percent hundred percent David A. Scutras says uh, thank you all. <laughs> Carrie, we character. are not we are not going to go there with this comment. All right, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that one. Thank you, oh, David, no. uh, for for hanging out with us. Uh, uh, Carrie, David, make sure you come back next week because you were great. Yes, given uh, time, hell, that was good. Next week, <laughs> I'll be slower. Next week, we are going to talk about art, colors, letters. Oh my, the story is just the beginning of the comic. Comics are an art form that melds words with pictures. How do we get those panels on the page? We're going to talk about that story process. Uh, I, have, uh, I have strong opinions. Oh, good. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> uh, David Rio says, uh, LOL, Tom talking about my coloring. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, you guys. Well, uh, you know, I'm trying to find my, here we go. I'm trying to find my, you know what we say until next week. Remember to. Make my Make mind. Mind. Oh, oh, mind. Mind. Good night, everyone. Hi, my name is Paul Kupperberg. Make mine silver wine. Make mine silver wine.